problem with this Tundra, okay, as you can see on the dash, 4 high keeps freaking flashing, right? It's also right here. Okay, 4 high is flashing. Okay, the symptoms of this are that 4 high, right, will stay in 4 high. It won't go out of 4 wheel drive, so you can't drive the car home because it's just in 4 wheel drive, okay? Or it won't go into four wheel drive. It just keeps staying two wheel drive. Okay, that's this is my situation. All right, but as you can hear, my actuator and the transfer case is working because you can hear it. You hear that? Make sure you have better sound here. Sounds like a fuel pump. My actuator and the transfer case is working. Okay, I'm gonna explain the detail in a little bit. When it keeps freaking flashing. Okay. Right there, bam. Okay, so we're gonna go fix this. Freaking 2002 Toyota Tundra. Problem is with this vehicle is that it won't go into four wheel drive, even though it is four wheel drive. Watch, as you can see, I jacked it up. I spin this part, the other side of the spin. Even though I locked the front axle already with the button inside the car, still not spinning. So what could it be, right? It could be either one or two things. At least from my experience. It could be this black actuator right here behind the transfer case that's in control of the four wheel low and four wheel high, right? But I know that's working because whenever I go press the button, you can hear it whir. It go like Beep. You unlock it, unlock it, unlock it, right? You can hear it opening and closing or, or working. You can definitely hear it. You will know. It's kind of, it sounds kind of like a fuel pump when you put the key in, right? You will know the sound when you hear it once you press that button, okay? So that's how I know it's working. But what I don't hear is the front. There's one over there, right? Behind differential. I'm going to show you right now. There's this guy right here, the silver thing right here. My flashlight's at. That is what's not working. I know that because I don't hear clunk. If you hear clunk, that's how you know it's working. But if you don't, that's likely your culprit, okay? That is not working. And if you don't hear a clunk, it means it's not working, all right? Once you press the button, you should be able to hear a clunk, like, like, doom, okay? It means to lock the axle together. That's what it means, okay? So I'm not hearing that, so I'm gonna go change that out, and I'm gonna, once I'm done changing it out, I'm gonna go put it in four wheel drive if I hear a clunk, and I'm gonna spin the tires, and then if they work, if they both spinning, then that's how I know it worked, okay? Now, this also applies to when you're stuck in four wheel drive. Again, I say again, if you're stuck in four wheel drive, this will likely be your culprit. If, if the case is that you can hear the rear of the transfer case go on, like it'll make a whirring sound. It sounds like electricity turning on, okay? So, um, that is my case as situation dictates and may be the transfer case. You may have to clean the transfer case actuator um, if, if nothing else works. But uh, before you go and blow your money on parts, which are very, exp are very expensive, clean it first, unplug it, put some mass airflow sensor cleaner on it, and then go ahead and, and um, try it again. If that doesn't work, then you likely have a bad um, actuator. All right, so today's repair we're gonna be using a 12 millimeter deep socket and with a extension, cause you're gonna need that. And we're gonna use a 3 8 inch socket wrench. And maybe I'm gonna probably use uh, a 12 millimeter wrench just so I can get into tight spots and spaces, etc. So we got 12 and what else? what I need. Well, we're, we're gonna adjust as we go. Oh, that's right, I'm gonna get my RTV reseal real quick because you're gonna have to reseal this RTV. All right, so I got my RTV right here and we're gonna get some brake clean and we're gonna spray around the uh, area to uh, kind of, you know, clean up the area a bit so that way I can see better. You know, your work is, the work is cleaner, etc. Oh, and you're also going to need a 10, size 10 hex screw because we're gonna have to drain the differential fluid out uh, to access the sensors or the actuator that we don't get diff fluid all over ourselves, etc. So let's get started. All right, so to drain this, <clears throat> you go right here, 
right here on my finger is okay you guys can see i have to break it open i might have to put my cap my, my flashlight down because um it's gonna be kind of hard to see but to prevent stripping we're gonna kind of clean it out with some brake clean because there's a lot of gunk on there so let's do that real quick all right don't brew that in because that's pretty toxic Okay, and let's break it open. Now that you know how it looks like, it's on the driver's side, okay? Let's break that open real quick. Can't hold the flashlight, guys, so sorry about that. So lefty Lucy. All right, there we go, it's broken open. I almost stripped it, actually. Thank God. I actually almost stripped that, yeah. Should look at that. That's all right, at least it's not stripping the inside of it. And we got it off, so. So matters so let's turn smear it out and then we'll wait for the diff fluid to drain out bam there we go look at that look at all that fluid okay we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the connector real quick i got a loose already so see if i can wiggle it out all right so that's out take out the vacuum hose or this is the ble uh, breather hose whatever we call it but it's not it doesn't do any vacuum anyways point is taking it out i'm gonna wipe it away with some uh, uh, brake clean, or excuse me, clean it. I'm gonna spray it on the area so it's not that messy of a job. That should be good. Top a little bit that way. There we go. Some more. <clears throat> And we're gonna proceed with the removal of this uh, actuator here. We're, we're gonna replace it with a new one. Now, there are four bolts that are in here. It's in the, it, you will see them bolted on to the differential. I mean, you can already see them, like one right here and the other one right here, on the other side right here. My fingers are out. You can see them right next to the differential. And there's two on top. So just try to get a deep socket or an extension and try to get those out, because you, you can. It's possible, I've done it before and um <clears throat> just uh wiggle it and play with it so i got the bottom two removed for the top two you're gonna have to get like the super long extension because it's pretty deep in there and all these lines are in the way right here as you can see you can go over the line see if we can reach it from there because <clears throat> they're pretty deep in there to be honest I'm no, trying my best. I can't show you guys. There's just no way. Oh, see, I caught one. So I'm going to break it open. Oh, there we go. We broke that one open. You will be able to feel it. Okay. So go ahead and spin that out. Just be advised that diff fluid um, may still come out. So I do have all the bolts removed. Okay, but it's stuck on there. Okay. If it's stuck on there, right? You see it's coming. Oh, shit. Look at all that good food. God damn it. Okay, if it's stuck on there, okay? As you can see right now, just spin. There we go. Spin the tire right here. Spin this to loosen it up. Okay? Loosen up the axle. Loosen up the axle, right? And unlock. You can hear a click. And you see? I can slowly start wiggling it out, okay? Bunch of diff fluids coming out. You can probably spin the other side too. With your foot. Okay, just to loosen up everything. There you go. Let the diff fluid drain out. Hopefully you guys are catching on what I'm saying and tracking on it. It is a pain to film do this at the same time i'm trying to give you guys an explanation that i couldn't figure out but and a lot of people can't either it is a pain changing this out carefully wiggle this out these are machine surfaces okay so it's out and then we're gonna pull it out real quick from behind all right got that out okay now we're gonna replace it with the new part so we have the new part right here okay the RTV gasket maker right here. Um, I don't, I would suggest OEM, but I heard the O'Reilly ones work. 
So just for time's sake and wanted to see if this is the actual problem, I bought an O'Reilly's one, okay? So we're going to put our TV around it and then we're going to put it back on and I'll explain after what to do next. So we're going to make sure that the services of this are clean. So it looks pretty clean already. But then we also have to make sure the services are clean in there. So we're going to get a rag and wipe it down. So I'm going to wipe it down. It should come off pretty easily. I use brake cleaner on the towel um, to wipe it off. You see it's already coming off a little bit. Let's so make sure these are all wiped down. None of it gets in that hole because it won't seal properly and get a diff differential leak. Um, I'm sure you guys know where I'm wiping. I don't know if you guys see it, but I showed it earlier where this uh, location is. So just wipe it down thoroughly. Tell you the surfaces are as smooth as possible. Okay. All right. We're also gonna clean the screws. A reason why I clean the screws now is because I've stripped a lot of them before. Not not just the screws, but like the um, the threads themselves, because there's gunk and dirt all over them. And I was just like, screw it. I'm just gonna put it in, to see if it threads. When you're forcing that kind of pressure. On machine services like that, I mean, you have a good chance of stripping it. So, so yeah. The well, next step is we we are going to add our TV on the surface right here. Okay, just don't add too much, but also don't add too little either. You have to apply this three to five minutes right when you put it on, because otherwise you're gonna have to reclean. And reapply. It's tedious as hell. As you can see, you gotta do the whole process ever all over again. So as you can see, I cleaned the surface. I use a wire brush to clean the surface a bit more. So I was gonna put that in there. Oh man, it's gonna be kind of hard to be honest. But I'll try my best. Try to see if you can wiggle in there without touching the RTV on the other stuff. It's tough, but it's doable. <clears throat> Usually I go in from here, right in front of the cat. That's like the only place where I can kind of wiggle it in smoothly. It does get stuck on some hoses sometimes. So I gotta kind of, there we go, through. I'm gonna put, line the teeth back up. And put it in there. All right, it's sitting in there now. Kind of flush it out a bit. Make sure you're bolting this back on in the star shape pattern. Now I'm just gonna plug these back in. So plug this back in. And once it's in, it's a reverse from removal. Just put the bolts back in. Wait an hour, torque it down to spec, and then freaking um, put the fluids in. And then it takes 24 hours to fully cure. Okay, now that you have everything plugged back in and it's off the jack stands and everything, this might not work until you get the car started, you get the car moving because you got to loosen up the axles, etc. Right? Um, okay, so your car will still keep flashing if you don't turn on your car and start driving it. So let's try this out. Start the car. Okay, I reset the battery as well, so my car is kind of. Um, Relearning itself, but we're gonna turn on four-wheel drive All right, you hear clunk All right now, it's now it's good. See it's flashing again, right? It's flashing. Well, let's reverse bam it locked in You got to move the axles a bit. It's in four-wheel drive now take it off four-wheel drive press it again And then move it forward Looks good. We're in two-wheel drive all right, let's try this on the, on the street. Now, the only reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to see if it works, but don't do this because we still don't have fluid in our diffs yet, okay? Don't, don't be going all freaking fast and shit. Bam, you hear a clunk, you hear that clunk? Bam, another click. Okay, we're in two-wheel drive. Hear that clunk? That's how I know it's locking. Let me, let me let you guys hear it again.
All right, so it's not locking, so let's move forward. Bam, click. That's how you know it's working. That's how you know your four-wheel drive is working. The front discs are locked. And it stopped flashing, as you can see. 